Security Level 3 Item Number SCP-5787 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Foundation Web Crawling Team Alpha Scion Joseph are to disseminate instructions regarding the cheese stick ordering process at Geno Sticks at Internet Tourist Roams and social media pages. Victims of SCP-5787 are to be located, detained, and provided Class A amnestics. A nearby surveillance team has been tapped by Foundation operatives. This is to be fueled on a daily basis, specifically during peak hours. A designated team has been assigned to survey on major tourist holidays. Description SCP-5787 is the phenomenon occurring at Geno Stakes in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Geno Stakes follows a semi-strict linguistic guideline when ordering from the store. For example, a customer who wants a cheese stick with cheese whiz and onions, he would order a whiz with. A whiz without would be a cheese stick with cheese whiz and no onions. Note. Provolone and American cheese are available as well, and these can be ordered following the same guideline by substituting Wiz. SCP-5787 activates once a patron, henceforth SCP-5787-1 incorrectly orders on three separate trips to the store. When this occurs, SCP-5787 will instantaneously dematerialize. Questioning has found that the witnessing cashier will have no recollection of the SCP-5787-1. Within the preceding 10 to 20 minutes, SCP-5787-1 will appear across the street from Geno Stakes unharmed. SCP-5787-1 will then approach the shop and correctly order a cheese stick. Subsequent investigations have found that SCP-5787-1 instances will always accurately follow their linguistic guideline. Research throughout the city of Philadelphia has confirmed that SCP-5787 is restricted to Geno Stakes. Addendum 5787-1 Preliminary Interview Forward Hand surveillance procedures were enacted over the course of the month. Plain clothes foundation operatives were stationed outside of Geno Stakes and cover story beta 7 documentary was prepared for action. On July 4th, 2017, surveillance witness Quentin Rodriguez dematerialized outside of Geno Stakes. Upon reappearing, he was approached by Agent Franklin. Thanks for agreeing to speak with us, Mr. Rodriguez. It's important that we get a feel of how the locals respond to these iconic locations. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm not from around here, man. It's, but it's great and all. Just great. I'd be, I'd be eating here every day if I could. <laughs> is that so? This is the first time you've had a Philly cheesesteak. No, no, no. I come to Philly every few weeks for work. God, I love the cheesesteak. He knows too. <laughs> Art Rodriguez clutches his head repeatedly. Is everything all right, sir? It's just a bit of a headache after... Uh, oh, God. Uh, I'll be back. Rodriguez heard he jogs away from the crew, returning three minutes later. A small smattering, what appears to be vomit, can be seen on the bottom of his shirt. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez? Look, man, I don't know if I can do this. I've been a little sick. Gino's... Great place, love it. Gotta love a great place like Gino's. Uh, not a problem. Uh, one last question. As a visitor, how do you feel about the linguistic side of your order? The whole with and without thing. Are you surprised about that? No, no, not at all. I completely and totally understand why they have rules like that. Tradition, big tradition around these parts, I guess. I never order wrong. Gotta order right. Gotta love a great place like, a great place like Gino's. Well, thank you for your time. What Rodriguez steers ahead as Agent Franklin goes to shake his hand. What Rodriguez's hand goes limp, and for fifteen seconds, Rodriguez sits motionless. Sir, ah, 
Uh, oh yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, good luck. Researchers note, following the interview, Rodriguez was detained, amnesticized, and quickly released. Subsequent interviews have provided similar inconclusive results. Rodriguez's emotional state and clear sickness have been taken into account and given justification for a D-class expedition. Addendum 3787-2 D-class investigation Transcript Forward D-2392 was chosen to lead an investigation of SCP-5787. He broke the ordering guidelines two times prior to this transcript. Begin log. D-2392 approaches the countertop. The cashier can be seen leaning through the open ordering window. Hi, can I have a cheese stick sandwich with American cheese and onions, please? The cashier's pupils dilate and the skin goes pale. Yes, sir, coming right up, sir. You made a terrible mistake, sir. Huh? The cashier points at D-2392. Reconcile and repent! The feed flashes white. Suddenly, D-2392 is lying on carpeted flooring. He stands, finding himself in a small, elegantly decorated library. He places both hands on his back and stretching. Oh, Christ, my back! Great, another tourist. D-2392 turns to his right, finding a humanoid entity resembling William Penn composed of oxidized copper. The entity henceforth, SCP-5787-2, is sitting in a love seat. Holy crap, you're the... No, I'm not the quicker oats guy. I can practically smell the out of state on you. Take a seat. D2392 complies, sitting in a wooden chair. Do you have any idea what you just did? I ordered a cheesesteak wrong. Very good. You ordered a cheesesteak wrong. Maybe they accept that sort of foreign chum figure at Pat's. Note, a rival cheesesteak shop across the street from Gino Steaks. But over here, not gonna fly. You want a history lesson, or should we just cut to the chase? I'll take the exposition, sir. <sighs> Very well. We Philadelphians sit on a fine balance, guided by the glorious wit without. Steak, cheese, onions, bread, maybe peppers if you're feeling up to it. With that balance comes restrictions. Restrictions that must be followed by enough people to retain the balance. Oaths risking a collapse. And with us, the glorious writ without. A uh, glorious writ without? Hmm. When we were conceived, we found it a simplicity. Steak, cheese, and a row. Ergo, you describe a cheese stick with a simple two or three words. You following? Simple. Now, what do you think happens when you complicate the ordering of such a simple sandwich? Uh, whatever this is. Catastrophe! The very scales of the universe slowly tip out of vapor. When a foolish creature such as yourself violates these simple rules, the glorious wit without grows restless. I still don't know what a wit without is. Do you mean like, like... How about I show you instead? Come, you're wasting time. SCP-5787-2 lead D-2392 through an arch hallway and down a torch-lit stone staircase. At the bottom is a large iron door. This isn't like, uh... This isn't a sex thing, right? You'll be wishing it was! SCP-5787-2 pulls the latch and forcefully pushes the door, revealing a large, barely illuminated chasm. In the center is a marble altar surrounded by a ring of fire. Come along, Outlander. There are sins you must atone for. The two approach the altar. Hey, look, I really didn't mean to... 
I apologize for offending you. As the altar becomes more visible, a large wooden box can be seen situated on top of it. SCP-5787-2 approaches the box, prostrates itself before it, and begins chatting. Oh, great one cultivator of carbohydrates, sultan of simplicity, Poseidon of Philadelphia, and he who is, was, and will forever be wit, and forever be without. The glory is wit without. The box begins to tremble. Bestow upon us your graciousness, as you grant the sacrament of penance to this underserving outlander. The rate of trembling increases as thick black smoke pours from the box. Show mercy, my liege. The box snaps open, starring D2392. From it rises a thick orange mass. The central point is pulled up into a rounded peak, which then widens, contorting into a head and neck-like structure. It appears to open its mouth and moans. Below it, two appendages resembling grilled onions wash themselves through, twisting into arms and hands. Pieces of fried beef float within the entity's viscous body, two large portions gathering in the upper head area, representing eyes. The bottom half of the amorphous entity is unseen, still inside the box from which it emerged. The frick? Behold the personification of the glorious Red Red Out! The Red Red Out groans, and it stretches its body towards D2392. A gurgled voice leaves its mouth. Pen, why did you summon me? Same as yesterday, my lord. Damn it! This is torture! I hate doing this. Just order the goddamn cheese kick correctly. It's not that hard. There's even a sign. The wet wet out begins to cry. SCP-5787-2 removes itself from its position of frustration and begins comforting the entity. Do not weep, my lord. You're going to be just fine, okay? <laughs> it hurts so much in this warm. I'm sorry, my lord. You! Eat him! What do you mean, eat him? That thing? All of him! Please frickin' do it! <laughs> it moans in agony as it slashes its body in the air. You'll do me a favor. You don't have a choice in the matter, and you're not leaving until you do. This is the only way. The wind without stretches over to D2392, gripping onto his pants. Please, I'm begging you, eat me, end it. Sir, you're embarrassing yourself. The wind without holds its hands to D2392's mouth. Everything burns. Please. Help me. <sighs> I need a new job. D2392 bites into the Whitbit Out's hand. Huh, not bad. It doesn't taste like cheese whiz either. What is that? The personification of the Whitbit Out is a combination of provolone, cheese whiz, and American cheese. Say the thing, my lord. Oh, yeah. <gasps> I wash thee with the blessing of the wit without your universal skills, tip ever so even, freaking whatever. You may continue. Over the next ten minutes, D2392 manages to consume its entire humanoid. How do you feel? Excellent! The picture becomes white before showing D2392 on the pavement across the street from Chino Sticks. He quickly runs to a nearby restroom and proceeds to vomit for five minutes. After recollecting himself, he approaches the shop and correctly orders a sandwich. End log.